Instructions Upon My Paradoxes of Defense, Chapter 3, A General Declaration of All Four General Fights to be Used with the Sword at Double or Single, Long or Short, with Certain Particular Rules to Them Annexed. Open Fight is to carry your hand and hilt aloft above your head, either with point upright or point backwards, which is best, yet use that which you shall find most apteth to strike, thrust, or ward. 2. Garden Fight, in general, is of two sorts. The first is true garden fight, which is either perfect or imperfect. The perfect is to carry your hand and hilt above your head with your point downwards t towards your left knee, with your sword blade somewhat near your body, not bearing out your point, but rather declining in a little towards your said knee, that your enemy cross not your point and so hurt you, stand bolt upright in this fight, and if he offer to press in, then bear your head and body a little backward. The imperfect is when you bear your hand and sword hilt perfect half above your head, as aforesaid, but leaning or stooping forward with your body, and thereby your space will be wide on both sides to defend the blow stricken at the left side of your head, or too wide to defend a thrust from the right side of the body. Also imperfect, if you bear your hand and hilt as aforesaid, bearing your point too far out from your knee, so that your enemy may cross or strike aside your point and thereby endanger you. The second is bastard garden fight, which is to carry your hand and hilt below your head, breast high or lower, with your point downward toward your left foot. This bastard garden ward is not to be used in fight, except it be to cross your enemy's ward at his coming in, to take the grip of him or such advantage, as in diverse places of the sword fight is set forth. 3. Close fight is when you cross at the half-sword either above, at the forehand ward, that is, point high, and handle and hilt low, or a true or bastard garden ward with both your points down. Close is all manner of fights wherein you have made a true cross at the half-sword with your space very narrow and not crossed, is also close fight. Variable fight is all other manner of lyings, not here before spoken of, where of these four that follow are the chiefest of them. Staccata, which is to lie with your right leg forward, with your sword or rapier hilt back on the outside of your right thigh, with your point forward towards your enemy, with your dagger in your other hand, extending your hand towards the point of your rapier, holding your dagger with the point upright, with narrow space between your rapier blade and the nails of your dagger hand, keeping your rapier point back behind your dagger hand if possible. Or, he may lie wide below under his dagger with his rapier point down towards his enemy's foot or with his point forth without his dagger. Imbricata is to lie with your hilt higher than your head, bearing your knuckles upward and your point depending towards your enemy's face or breast. Mountanta is to carry your rapier pummel in the palm of your hand, resting it on your little finger with your hand below, and so mounting it up aloft, and so you come in with a thrust, 
upon your enemy's face or breast out of the imbricata. Passata is either to pass with the staccata or to carry your sword or rapier hilt by your right flank with your point directly against your enemy's belly with your left foot forward extending forth your dagger hand with the point of your dagger forward as you do your sword with narrow space between your sword and dagger blade and so make your passage upon him. Also, any other kind of variable fight or lying whatsoever a man can devise, not here expressed, is contained under this fight. Good morning, fencers of the interwebs. Do you have a moment to talk about the true fight of George Silver? My name is William Kilmer. I fence at Worcester Historical Swordsmanship here in Worcester, Massachusetts in the United States, and I have been a student of the true fight of George Silver for about three years. So, uh, today we will be looking at Silver's fights and lyings. I know that I promised fights, lyings, grounds, and governors this week, but it just got to be entirely too much, uh, too big a bite for one video. So, grounds and governors next week. In other channel news, Stephen Hand of Staccata, Hobart, Tasmania, has given me permission to include some demonstration lessons from the Silver Curriculum in his book, English Swordsmanship, Volume 1. Uh, and be looking for that uh, starting in the next few episodes. Uh, this is a great book, and it's very usable and very well organized. Uh, the curriculum is uh, very logical, and I'm really looking forward to sharing some of that with you. So, on to fights and lyings. Silver begins his discussion of fights and lyings with open fight, which is apt. If a combatant has never faced a silver fencer before, and you arrive in a tournament and they are suddenly confronted with open fight. It's one of the most delightful things you'll ever see. The look in their eyes through the grill of the mask. <sighs> worth the price of admission every single time. First of all, open fight is damned aggressive. Uh, that's absolutely intended to intimidate. It's what it's for. It also gives you the ability to hit really hard, or not. And if your opponent wants to attack you, they have to go for a deep target. Because none of the shallow targets are available, which brings them well within your distance. Which, if you are short or slow, or less mobile, means they do the work of closing the distance for you. I encourage you to take a look at Paul Wagner's video. It's entitled, Hands Up in the Air. Uh, I'll link it in the description below. It talks about open fight. Uh, it's on the Staccata channel. And his discussion of the tactical use of open fight is illuminating. There is only one line in open fight, and that is open, or as Silver calls it in one place, naked fight. Very, very suggestive. You're bearing your breast to the foe, you're showing yourself fearless and unconcerned, all the while you're keeping safely out of their reach, and making them come to you if they want to initiate an attack, because you have studied distance very closely, and in many cases, they have not. They rely upon having those two swords between in order to know where they are. And if you take one of those swords out and up and back, suddenly they're clueless. Uh, they don't have an idea. 
I have had people wander obliviously into my distance in a tournament. Uh, and I'm sure they weren't pressing me. They were just offering me a false time completely by accident and bing. Uh, I've won bouts exactly like that. They had seen me fight, and they still didn't know my measure, not without both blades in between. Most of the things that we have said about open fight, we can also say, are applicable to true garden, uh, which is also a point withheld lying. As in open fight, uh, in true garden, the hand is also held high, and one can strike very powerfully if that is what one needs to do. True Garden is perhaps Silver's favorite line, and he is very particular about how it is formed. Uh, because formed incorrectly with the point too far forward, or with the blade too far from the body, or with the head inclined too far forward, True Garden offers some unexpected vulnerability. Correctly formed, true garden, as my instructor Ken Monshine says, uh, it's like you are in a fortress uh, against the fencer with the same dominant hand. Uh, you have uh, closed their strongest and most natural line of attack, closed it utterly. True garden is the first line in garden fight. Uh, the other lying in this fight uh, is Bastard Garden. True Garden is basically a really high saber first with the uh, arm above the level of the eyes, uh, the point declining towards the knee of the forward leg, all right, or the offside leg. Uh, the Bastard Garden lying is held below the eyes. Uh, it's basically saber first or saber second, uh, inside bastard garden, outside bastard garden. And uh, the point there is also withheld. It's pointed towards uh, the toe of the forward leg. There are those purists who disallow the outside bastard garden, but that is an argument for another day. Stephen Hand notes that it is best to be certain that you are holding your arm either above your eyes or below your eyes. Holding them at the level of your eyes is not a good thing. So, next in Silver's order of exposition is close fight, which for me is the most difficult of the fights uh, to interpret. If you have any thoughts on close fight which might help to clarify mine, I would be interested in reading them in the comments. If I understand correctly, close fight encompasses being within time of the hand, time of the hand and body, and also time of the hand, body, and foot-ish. Uh, if distance allows for one of the combatants, at least, uh, to hit on a really short lunge, like basically a step, I think Silver would call it close fight, but the need for any extravagant lunge or a gather or for any kind of a pass forward would put the combat at at least first distance. Now, Silver describes only two engaging guards in close fight, one with the point up in the manner of forehand ward and the other with the point down uh, in the manner of bastard garden ward but doesn't really consider them if I understand what he's saying to be lying. Because you're not lying in wait or lying in ambush in first distance. Uh, uh, thank you, Stephen Hand, for the image. You're not lying in first distance at all. Silver wants you to do your business and get out of there. Fly out. Strike and fly out. Strike and fly out. This is what Silver says over and over again. You don't want to be hanging about in close fight. Silver says that the proper use of the grounds and governors prevent the close fight. You, your only other option, if you are in close fight, besides flying out, is to take the grip. That is, to close with your opponent and grapple, which Silver seems to regard as a sub-optimal option. Silver also says that the proper use of the grounds and the governors prevent the grip. 
Though he teaches grips, belt and suspenders, that's the silver way. Either way, fly out or take the grip. Silver wants you to do one or the other and to do it quickly because he doesn't want you to stay for any period trading parries and reposts in time of the hand. If that happens, you have lost control. The grounds and governors have gone out the window. You have no real idea what is happening. You're reacting and eventually you will react wrong and you will be hit. So just don't be there. Get in or go out. That's Silver's close fight, or so it seems to me. The fourth and final of Silver's fights is variable fight. Variable fight, as Silver describes it, encompasses all of the point forward guards and any other odds and ends that anyone cares to invent. Many of these have similar equivalents among the engaging guards in the Angelo Taylor Rower lineage. Staccata is a low and withheld saber three. Uh, the sword foot is forward. The sword hand rests against the sword side thigh with the point forward. If you have a dagger, you extend the dagger hand close uh, to your sword point. The dagger point is up. Uh, this may also be done uh, with the sword point held low, and there are some variations in dagger position as well. Embrocata is a high saber second, or uh, what some systems call a hanging guard. Montante is a high spadroon guard. Silver does not think much of these two lyings, but for the sake of completeness, I will just note that you may, if you make a rising cut, wind up in one or the other of them. So, for uh, Silver's sake, figure out how to strike, thrust, and ward uh, from both of them. Uh, Stephen Hand does cover uh, both of these in his Silver curriculum. Finally, we have Passata, which is staccata only with the off side foot and shoulder forward. Uh, this is an interesting guard and one which I encourage you to study and experiment with. It appears to offer an easy target. But if you manage your distance properly, the target is safely out of your opponent's reach and it offers the silver practitioner an opportunity to pass forward and backward very fast uh, and in either case, passing forward or back to present the sword point immediately. Uh, this can be something of a surprise to people who haven't seen Posada. Uh, it is especially good if you are tall and can make a really long pass. It's a nasty, nasty thing when it's properly apl applied. Thank you, Stephen Han, for suggesting that I experiment with it. Uh, if Passata is adopted with a dagger, the dagger is extended uh, basically point to point with the sword. So that brings us, therefore, to the end of Silver's Fights and Lines. Uh, next time, I promise, we will proceed to Grounds and Governors. So please, comment, like, subscribe, hit the bell. For more True Fight of George Silver, and I'll see you on the flip side. Two, Garden Fight. In general, yeah, you might be. Seven, one side or the other. Or not, I mean, you know, entirely up to you. That is your spot on Overwatch. This is the usual disclaimer. I have as I have explained elsewhere, never claimed to be an expert. I am a student. And so far, my understanding of the true fight of George Silver, I have depended on many scholars and instructors. Uh, first of all, of course, upon George Silver himself, and but uh, also on many of you who are perhaps watching this video. Therefore, if I have omitted, or misrepresented, or otherwise messed up 
the material from which I, I am working. Catch me. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me deal with it at, in some subsequent video. I will. I promise. Uh, I am absolutely indebted to all of you. And my exploration of silver and my understanding of true fight would not be possible without you. So accept my thanks. Criticize me as you need to. And I'll see you all on the flip side.